child. I could drop one little thug tip for that. <laughs> Y'all did, oh my God. Brilliant, 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 mother freaking brilliant. I probably done said brilliant by 5,100 times in this review. What's up, it's Nikki. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be reviewing the Halsley album movie, If I Can't Have Love, I Want Power. I have been a fan of Halsley since Badlands and this for me just propels me further into stand territory. Guys, this album movie, I'm not, I think that's what you call it, is so good and so freaking brilliant. The imagery is top tier, the costumes, the music, my god, the music. The cinematography, child, I'm dead. Okay, so the film follows Halsley as a young queen, Lila, whose husband, the king, dies, and she discovers that she is with child. Now, the synopsis for the film on HBO Max says, young and pregnant queen Lila wrestles with the manipulative chokehold of love. That's not the interpretation that I got from this. I saw no love between Lila and the king and no love lost when he died. Now... They do elude to the fact that Lila killed him because he was abusive to her. This movie is very metaphorical and maybe I'm missing some things or reading things wrong, but from the film and the music, I thought it was about her as a woman, the way the world or men view women and the love between mother and child. Society, men tend to look at women and put them into one of two boxes, virginal, nurturing, maternal, caretaker, or sexual, deviant, femme fatale, promiscuous. I mean, this whole body count mess we still have today. It's thought that a woman who is quote unquote wild and quote unquote promiscuous can't be a good mother. In this film, we see Lila being many things society would typically label as not fit to be a good mother, but she actually is nurturing and loving and soft in the scenes we get with her and her child. I absolutely loved this film, but I do wish there were more dialogue. I wanted more just like meat and potatoes to the film and the plot. The artistry, the imagery, the lyrics, it's 100% on point, but I would have liked to get more from this film. Now, after the king dies and Lila pretty much runs wild, she is told, now, some guy, the court gesture, I don't know, child, I just pulled that word out of the air. I don't know who this guy was or what his title was, but he pretty much seemed to kind of be running the show. He tells her that her behavior is not very becoming of a queen. That once she has the baby, she will be executed. If the baby is a girl, she will be thrown into the ocean. And if the baby is a boy, they will raise him up to be a king just like his father. Because they pretty much suspect she killed the king. Now, the film is speaking on pregnancy and motherhood. I am not 100% clear on what it is saying precisely in regards to that. Her baby, though, for her is like a stay of execution. And the silent witch midwife in the little hut in the middle of the woods, child, her character was so amazing. And amazing without even speaking one freaking line. Now, let's get into the music. My favorite songs are Bells and Santa Fe and Lilith, Lilith. <laughs> But let me not get ahead of myself. The movie opens with the king being discovered dead. Lila sees like a dark version of herself in the mirror. But I'm not sure about it being a dark version. To me, it is the powerful version of her. But it's kind of portrayed as a dark version. Which I feel like kind of just symbolizes the power she unlocks. The paranormal her that she discovers is very like the costume and the look is very dark but that's not my interpretation i interpret it as power now this is when we get the song bells in santa fe this song is superior it is freaking top tier halsley at her best now in the song she sings 
it is not a happy ending which for me as i was watching alluded to how the film would end she sings all of this is temporary y'all i love this song so freaking much i can't even express it now as the song is playing the main guy who is against lila the eyes I, I call him the court gesture i don't even know what that word means who is listed as in the cast he is listed as the aristocrat tells the group that Lila will not go quietly. When the king is found dead, everyone side eyes her, pretty much suspecting she killed the king. So they are plotting on her. Lila is on the throne and then she gets up, looks over the kingdom as Halsley sings, don't wait for me, don't wait for me. It is not a happy ending. Standing on the balcony of the castle, we hear Halsley singing over and over, all this is temporary. Amazing scene. This is so amazingly shot and well crafted. The visuals with the lyrics, it's just amazing. Child, I was hooked. I was so intrigued. I was so into it. So we see the king's funeral and we get the song 1121, 1121. Not quite sure what the title represents, Lila is looking pretty bored at the funeral, aloof. <laughs> this older lady keeps eyeing her, a lady who is just, she down with the aristocrat. For some reason, Lila pulls up her sleeve to show the lady a bruise on her wrist. Some standout lyrics in this scene from the song 1121 are, well, I won't die for love, but I've got a body here to bury. I won't die for love, but I have got a body here to bury. I find this really interesting because had she not killed her abuser, he very likely could have killed her. So saying I won't die for love, I feel like it's speaking to she won't be the sacrifice. She won't die for love. Halsley sings, my shoulders are heavy already. Yeah, I know the parts of me that I've hated and I can't tell which ones are mine and which I created. So freaking powerful. I interpret this as her shoulders are heavy with burden, with this love, with this abuse, and the parts of her that she hates at this point, it's the her she's created to adapt to the love that she is buried in. This is the woman she felt she had to be with this man and in this love versus the parts that were her to begin with. She can't even tell the difference anymore. It's like she lost herself in love and now she is on a journey of reveal now that her abuser is gone. But when she sings, please don't leave. Don't leave me in the shape you left me. Just leave me in a place you found me safe and soundly. I feel that speaks to the life growing inside of her the danger and fear of pregnancy the chance that you could lose the baby the fact that for 10 months the baby takes over your body she's saying please don't leave me in the shape you left me i think this speaks to the change and the transformation once you become a mother just leave me in a place you found me is being a mother but keeping who you are as a woman leave me in a place you found me she sings i won't die for love but ever since i met you you could have my heart and i would break it for you i think that's a mother speaking to her child not speaking to her lover her lover now we see lila in bed and the mirror version of herself the dark version the powerful version of herself comes and punctures her hand through her stomach while Lila is dreaming. Now we see Lila get seeds, put them on a bird's nest and pee on them. Child, I don't know what the heck this is supposed to be or symbolize some kind of medieval torture chamber pregnancy test. Now, I don't know why I said torture chamber. I think because that's what I associate with medieval. <laughs> but I'm guessing it's some kind of sorcery pregnancy test. Now, in this scene, we get my favorite song, Lila. Out mother freaking standing. This song is truly a standout for me. It is perfection from top to bottom. Halsley sings, I'm perfection when it comes to first impressions. Well, I romanticize and then I get to stressing. 
You know I get too caught up in a moment. I can't call it love if I show it. I just F things up if you notice. As Lila contemplates being pregnant, Halsley is singing of her destructive patterns and the fear that she F things up. I think Halsley wig throughout the film uh, pretty atrocious <laughs> but i do really like the purple and teal wig she wears for this next scene so halsley and her handmaidens i guess that's what they call running through town having fun drinking alcohol hooking up with guys and of course the aristocrats are looking on disgusted child the way this guy was looking at lila with complete disgust throughout the film was killing me child like i was cracking up we get the track girl is a gun for this scene not one of my favorites it's okay i do love when she sings the lyrics no i am not your daydream i won't have your baby can someone play that line for my future boyfriend please <laughs> this song is to me and the scene representing defiance and again speaks to Halsley's perceived flaws. She sings, it's a shot in the dark. I'm not a walk in the park. I come loaded with the safety switched off. This girl is a gun. Love the metaphor. What is it like, what is it that they say a, a, a gun in the wrong hands is something? Halsley, yeah, I guess she's kind of saying that in the song. Girl is a gun and the gun in the wrong hands is. Halsley is just so freaking talented and so creative. Like, y'all, okay. <laughs> so after the debauchery, Lila ends up walking through the woods after falling off of her horse. She stumbles onto this hut that kind of resembles a bird's nest to me. This is when she meets the silent witch midwife lady who, despite Lila speaking to her, never speaks a word. She puts her hands on Lila's stomach and starts this Lamaze-like breathing, which Lila joins in on. The silent witch midwife lady, for me, represents the solace that can be found in fellowship with other women. When everyone around Lila has pretty much turned their backs on her, she finds the silent witch midwife lady lost running through the woods she pretty much is like the midwife to me she is the support system she helps bring the child into the world she comforts lila she gives her an understanding that a life is growing inside of her Lila gets back to the castle and sees the nest she peed on. Now it is confirmed that Queen Lila is indeed pregnant and she is not happy or bursting with glee at the news. Now the next series of scenes shows Lila throughout her pregnancy, three months, five months, seven months, etc. She does not appear to be happy. Her facial expressions are very gloom, but finally at seven months, we see her smile, finally coming to terms with being a mother and perhaps being happy about it. As she's walking, she sees a woman and a man smiling, presumably in love. She stares at them for a moment, and I think it is her seeing them and reflecting on the love she was supposed to have with the king. Now, these scenes are where we get the very brilliant song, The Lighthouse. Halsley sings, from a tender age, I was cursed with rage. Came swinging like a fist inside a batting cage. The song takes us on a journey of Halsley being lost at sea and the men who come along supposedly as saviors, but turns out it's only lies. I love the lyrics. I never wanted saving. I just wanted to be found. Oh my God, masterpiece Halsley, master fucking peace. <laughs> now I found this next scene so interesting more so the dialogue so Lila is pretty much held at court and the aristocrat tells her since the departure of the king you have revealed your most unbecoming nature 
Now, this ties back to the song 1121 for me when she sings, yeah, I know the parts of myself that I have hated and I can't tell which ones are mine and which I created. It's like this woman created a version of herself with this man that she loved. Now, with him gone, she was able to reveal a different her. A her that has been deemed unacceptable possibly the her she was all along but suppressed or denied the aristocrat be, by, be, berates her for going around with her harlot friends when she has a responsibility as the wife of the king to conduct herself with dignity and honor Guys, this speaks to the portrayal and burden and responsibility women carry today. How you are looked at and expected to be perceived when associated with a man. And I feel it also speaks to that embarrassment factor. The factor of not embarrassing your husband or your boyfriend. Carry yourself a certain way because you are representing a man. Child, this scene just said so much for me. The behavior you are expected to display and how any deviation from that is not dignified or respectable. I also found it very interesting that he tells her all they want is the child that she will bear and she'll be executed. For me, speaking to how women can be seen as nothing more than a vessel for the child they bear. Speaking to reproductive rights and the... Just that entire argument. We just want the baby. You. I mean, that's what he was basically saying to her. Pretty much, she is worthless, not respectable. Royal blood does not flow through her veins, but we want the baby that you bear. He tells her that regardless of the child's fate, she has defiled the court. Like, regardless of the fate of the baby, we force you to bear in modern times, by taking away your rights to abortion, you have been proven to be X, Y, Z, and we decide your fate because of it. It is your wickedness that has brought you here. You brought this on yourself. I don't know, y'all. Am I the only one reading this and how this is all playing out in the dialogue? He tells her to go and make herself useful. My nigga, go give birth. Make yourself useful. As a woman, that's your purpose. That's what you are good for. That's what we need from you. My nigga. I don't know what Halsley meant in writing this, but child, this is what I got. She strips off the fancy gown and the jewels and runs out. Being dressed in these things means nothing because they have decided what kind of woman she is. This, to me, speaks to the politics of desirability. You can wear certain things that will deem you desirable by society but in the end baby you just a woman and you gonna have to play the part we tell you to play and dressing up in these cloaks of desirability will not save you from the fate that we will hand out to you chat y'all i could really go in on this i ain't gonna go too far okay like i'm just we just gonna talk about <laughs> the album movie but this is all my interpretation like do what i got <laughs> this film for me is clearly speaking to womanhood and pregnancy and love and motherhood the title if i can't have love i want power what power the power to give life the power to take away life, the power in getting revenge on her abuser, the paranormal power she discovers in death. Now, I'm not sure if she had a boy or a girl. The baby, I mean. We never did see the baby thrown into the ocean, so I'm assuming she had a boy. I really don't like the song Easier Than Lying. I have nothing to say about it. But Lila runs off and goes back into the woods to give birth to her baby with the silent witch midwife lady with an army coming after her. During Lila giving birth, we see that she cooked up some poison, which is how she killed the king, poisoning his drink. Now, we end up seeing the lady bird's nest hut woods house being burned down lila being drug out after just giving birth and the aristocrat uh, the aristocrat holding the baby this pissed me off i 
don't want y'all bastards raising my motherfucking child. But Halsley told us in the first song that this would not be a happy ending. Now, we get to see Lila getting bathed and dressed up for her execution. And we get the song of mother freaking songs. I am not a woman. I'm a god. Child, I love this song. I am not a woman. I'm a god. I am not a martyr. I'm a problem. I am not a legend. I'm a fraud. So keep your heart because I already got one. I just want to feel something. Tell me where to go because everybody knows something I don't know. Great lyrics. We get scenes of an alternate reality of Lila with her baby raising her child. The brilliantly written song, Darling, plays during these scenes. I love the contrast of seeing the woman Lila was portrayed as during the first part of the film to now her being portrayed as soft and maternal and smiling and raising her child. The woman Halsley sings about throughout this album film, the mistakes, the destruction, and turning around on this song and bringing such tenderness. Oh, love it. Great. Brilliant. Masterpiece. I feel like it speaks to the many facets of a woman. You're not just cut into this little box of this is who you are here's the stamp we're putting on you like it's so many facets and i loved how that is portrayed in this album film <laughs> now we still get glimpses of the brokenness in lyrics like never knew the feeling of a stable home been a couple years of living on the road couldn't really tell you where they leave a stone to visit me when i'm dead and gone Every since a little girl, I found it sweet. Driving past a graveyard on a lonesome street. All the little flowers gave me something to believe in. So heartwarming. So heartbreaking. And hopeful all at the same time. This sequence of Lila with her baby, the lyrics, the music, seeing her grow to the baby grow to a little child it's so beautifully shot it is so brilliantly shot the scenery everything is just so touching and gripping and it's truly amazing all while we hear Halsley singing darling don't you weep there's a place for me somewhere we can sleep see you in your dreams darling don't you cry head fast towards the light foolish men have tried but only you have shown me how to love being alive. Child, I could drop one little thug tip for that. <laughs> Y'all did, oh my God, brilliant, 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 mother freaking brilliant. I probably done said brilliant by 5,100 times in this review, but brilliant. Child, almost like, almost made me want to have a little baby. Then I come back to life. <laughs> then the sun cuts off and I get back to reality. <laughs> Now, after Lila is executed, we see the dark version of her standing there, right? I feel like seeing this version of Lila after her head is chopped off symbolizes her power in the afterlife. How they have killed her body, but she is still living on. We see Lila haunting the castle, walking through as we see everyone in the castle, the aristocrats, Everyone who had a hand basically in her execution lying dead. Presumably from the poison she cooked up and laced in the food and drink at their feast. Guys, this album film is so masterpiece. I really feel like even if you have never heard a Halsley song before in your life, you will like this film. Do not look for historical accuracy. The time period is... To me, more of a dressing up. It's more of a costume to the work. The makeup, the fashion, the scenery. This is all so artistic and so compelling and so brilliant. I need a thesaurus so I can find another word for brilliant. <laughs> I really hate that I'm not seeing people talk about this more. I would love to hear other, th other thoughts and takeaways, guys. Comment below. Let me know what was your interpretation of this work did it fall in line with my interpretation or did you get something completely different did you love it as much as i did 
I have not seen Halsley talk about this project. Honestly, a lot of my favorite artists like Halsley Banks, I don't really follow. I don't access their social media. I like to just have the art. So I was unaware that Halsley even had a project. I randomly saw this on HBO Max. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> so great surprise. It was glorious, glorious, glorious. Such a treat, loved it. Thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you watched until the end. If you like my content, guys, make sure you support my channel. Like this video, comment down below, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you can be alerted when I post TV show reviews, movie reviews, topics, chats. I'll see you in the next video.